Hey guys, I mentioned in an earlier video that I had dropped my dial indicator onto the concrete floor from about three or four feet up and rendered it completely non-working. It's been sitting on my bench for a couple of weeks, making me sad because every time I look at it, uh, I just think about how I don't have a dial indicator anymore. This is the only one I have besides my uh, dial test indicator, which isn't really useful in a lot of, uh, I don't know, maybe not quite as many applications as this indicator has been. So not having any experience inside of dial indicators and not having done any research online, I thought I'll turn on the camera and uh, see what happens. So this was about 45 minutes uh, worth of work and probably 40 plus minutes of that was me just staring at the, uh, you know, at the guts of this thing, trying to figure out how to not make it worse. My initial theory was that the plunger was bent and was scraping on the indicator housing when I would, you know, rack it in and out of the, uh, or back and forth, I guess. Uh, this ended up not being true. I put diacom on the shaft and ran it back and forth a few times, hoping to see like some scratches on one side or another that would tell me where it was bent. Uh, but all it did was scratch all of the diacom off. It's actually a really smoothly uh, polished plunger shaft. So uh, the diacom wouldn't stick to it at all. I went ahead and pulled the back plate off and you can see that it's actually a little rack and pinion system. So my next assumption was that the pinion was being forced too tightly up against the rack and this ended up being what the problem was. So I removed this little spring and the uh, spring pin and then I didn't want this backer plate to come flying out because there's a couple of watch springs underneath it and I was afraid if that plate came off I would never get those springs rewound. So I left one screw in and removed the other two and then with my screwdriver I tried to force the pinion away from the rack which didn't work uh, so I put it all back together. Notice that that pin is sticking out further than it was at the beginning of the video and you can see some of the threads. I didn't notice that at the time, but uh, we'll discuss it more here in just a minute. So I decided I would tighten everything back up uh, just because I didn't want to try to troubleshoot more than one problem at a time. And after tightening everything back up, uh, it still didn't work. And then I decided to try to get the front apart. And this actually made me really nervous. I spent a lot of time thinking about this because there wasn't a set screw or any obvious uh, mechanism that would allow you to take this front uh, little plastic plate off, this little lens. Um, the reason is you actually just have to muscle it off. And I actually thought I was going to break the indicator getting it off, but it, it did come apart. So uh, I was pretty happy about that. And then uh, the next thing is to remove this little dial ring. And uh, I didn't know what to expect underneath and was surprised when there was a front brass plate with four more screws. Now, not wanting this plate to fall apart, I removed three of the screws and just loosened the fourth one. And immediately the plunger... Um, sprung back into the housing. So this was definitely it. Uh, you can see here that there are slots in the little brass plate and this allows you to adjust the preload of the pinion against the rack by rotating this plate uh, back and forth a little bit. So it actually will loosen it up so much that the whole assembly becomes very sloppy. So uh, I did have to put it back together really slowly and I took my time um, you know, fine tuning the adjustments and then tightening the screws down a little bit and then checking everything and tightening a little bit more. And I tried to go as slowly and methodically as possible because I didn't want to go too far and have to keep backing up, you know, trying to figure out what, you know, what else to do. Um, but th this is exactly what I needed to do and I got it working and yeah, I've been really happy with it since. Uh, I guess reassembly uh, is quite a bit easier than disassembly. This little ring pops back on and the lens snaps on uh, quite nicely. You'll notice here that this uh, spring pin on the back, like I said, is sticking out too far. The reason is, is that the nut on that pin is actually a jam nut. And initially I assumed it was actually just a part of the pin. Uh, so when I tried to reinstall this little uh, retainer plate, it wouldn't go on and it took me like five minutes to realize that the pin was sticking out further than it should have been. So I had to take uh, some of that back apart and then get the pin out. And uh, I'll show you a close up here of uh, what this pin looks like once I get it out. It's actually a pain for me because I wear a large size glove and my fingers are just too fat to get inside the housing uh, very well. If you have dainty fingers, that uh, probably be a piece of cake. My, those are dirty fingernails. Uh, but that's an impressive little pin, so let's try to focus on that. Uh, putting it back together was just as difficult as getting it apart, again, because of my fat fingers, but I couldn't get a wrench or, or pliers or any other tool in there and be agile enough to actually tighten the pin. Once I got it screwed down with my fingers, I could use my 
needle nose pliers to uh, tighten that jam nut and that pretty much solved the problem the retainer plate goes back on as well as the backing plate and um, of course this return spring and that was it so anyway i don't know if this was really um educational for anybody but hopefully it satisfied some curiosity if you've always wanted to see the inside of an indicator um there's a link in the description where you can buy this from Shars. I recommend it because I've had good luck with it. And uh, feel free to leave your comments and questions below. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.